Welcome to this video tutorial on texture mapping in Rhino. To get started with texture mapping, we're going to be adding some materials to each of these objects which need to be accurately mapped to the geometry of the object we're using. To start with this, I'm just going to change my viewport to a rendered view so we can see the texture as we add it to the object. You can see at the moment we've got no materials added to these four objects here. I'm going to just be using Rhino Render to create a material in this tutorial, but it can be used in V-Ray and in Enscape as well if you're using other render engines to texture up your materials. To make a new material, I'm just going to go to the Materials tab, click on the plus sign there and make a physically based material. We're going to scroll down to the detailed settings and add a base color to that to allow us to add in a texture image. And under that base color, I'm just going to select here to add in a kind of brick texture. And this is a four by four, so four meter by four meter brick texture I've got here. Now that's added, you can see my material has kind of got that brick texture applied to it. And we're now gonna apply it to these objects here. I'm gonna apply it to all the objects at the same time, just by selecting them, right clicking on my material and clicking assign to objects. Now you'll see, because I'm using kind of basic primitive objects here, by default, they already have some mapping applied to them. What I mean by mapping is that it has kind of applied the texture to each surface of the object in a certain orientational pattern, as you can see here. We're gonna start with the cube. And as you can see here, if we zoom in on this cube, the texture has been mapped onto the surface, but it isn't exactly accurate. It's slightly warped on this face. It doesn't look like the bricks are the correct scale. My cube is actually sort of 10 meters by 10 meters and the texture map I'm using here is a four meter by four meter texture. So the, the kind of bricks are way too big in this particular instance. So we're gonna to need to correct that via the use of texture mapping. And to do that, if we select the object, go to the properties panel, we then can open up our texture mapping panel, which is found under this kind of checkerboard cylinder option here under properties. Now in here, we have multiple ways we can texture map different objects. For a cube, the best one to use is the box mapping, but we could also use the planar mapping if we just want to apply texture mapping to one face of this cube. I'm gonna begin with the planar mapping as it's the easiest to show you how it works, and then we'll move on to the box mapping too. So the way any of these texture mapping options work is we can select the planar mapping here. It will ask us to draw out a kind of plane in this case, which is just defining essentially the size of the texture we want to place on this cube. I'm going to draw it over to the left here. I'm going to be quite rough with this and we're just going to apply a sort of square texture about this sort of size. When we do that, it will give us a little preview of the size of that texture. And if we hit enter, it will then apply that onto our geometry here. As you can see, we've now got a smaller texture on this face, which is based upon the size of that kind of square that I drew out just then. And because it's planar mapping, we don't have any texture on the sides. It's kind of just warping the edges of this texture downwards. We will have a texture on the bottom and on the top because it's only applying it in that one planar direction there. Now, if we wanted to customize the size of this texture again, and I, perhaps I wanted to make it four by four to match that accurate map, we can now do so now we've applied that texture mapping in this X, Y, and Z panel here, which is under the texture mapping option. These three numbers here apply to this X, Y, and Z size, first being X, which is the width, the second being Y, which is the length, and the third being Z, which is the height. Now, because this is a planar mapping, it will only work with the X and Y, but won't work with the Z option yet because we've applied it as a planar mapping, so this won't change. But as you can see now, making that four by four, the texture is much smaller. And because this is a 10 by 10 cube, you can see that this is texture mapped accurately now to the correct scale on this cube. Now, if we also want to get the texture on this kind of length side, we can do so in a couple of ways. One is just to switch the type from planar to box over there. And you can see now that instantly just changes it over to a box mapping and it's applied that four meter height to the box as well there to accurately map that. If you were doing this from scratch, you could also do it by selecting the object, going up to box mapping here, and drawing out a box, which will be your kind of box mapping, similar to how we did the planar mapping there. You can then hit enter to apply that box mapping on, and similar to this, you can then adjust the scale of that box mapping 
to the correct scale you need for your object, like so. Once you've applied mapping like this, you can also play around with the rotation in this X, Y, Z rotation option here. Top one being X, second being Y, and the third being Z. And we can twist the rotation of certain faces of our model if we want to kind of change that mapping or that particular rotation on the object. So that's simply how you use the planar and the box mapping. And the majority of the time, you'll be using these two ways of mapping objects, as these are the kind of easiest to use, and they can pretty much work for most kind of standard geometries you'll be using. Now we're going to move across to the sphere here, and you can see that we've kind of wrapped that texture around. But this isn't really a spherical map. This brick texture is a flat kind of 2D square map, as we can see here in the preview. Now there are only a few kind of types of maps that you get which are kind of spherical maps which means they can be applied to spherical objects and that will kind of make them look accurate to how the image is based. These can be found usually for things called HDRIs which are kind of lighting models or if you've got kind of circular geometry pieces. Now this is a kind of texture map of the moon and I'm going to apply this to the object as an example of a spherical kind of map that you might apply. This could also be things like sort of balls, footballs, any sort of spherical objects would have a slightly different looking map which is kind of warped at the edges. So let's create a texture for this again. Just add in that base colour to it and we'll use the moon this time and we'll just apply that to my sphere like so. And you'll see by default, as it's a spherical object, it knows to kind of map it in a spherical motion. And you can see that's a kind of perfect mapping we have there of our sort of moon model here. If, for instance, it didn't come in or you kind of accidentally tweaked the mapping to something else, let's say we accidentally have it as a planar map and it's kind of warped now, we can apply a spherical mapping just by clicking on the spherical map making sure that we lock to the center point and usually you can do that making sure your center is ticked on down in your snaps and we hover over the edge until you get that white line that says CEN for center and then we're just going to draw the box out to line up with the edge of the model and that applies our spherical mapping there and that's very simple use of spherical mapping. Cylindrical mapping is the same and just the same again you applied in very much the same way as you have done the cube and the spherical. This gets slightly more complex when you have objects such as this that don't follow a standard mapping but may have a combination of different mapping types you need to apply to them or you might have certain faces that you need to rotate or realign in order for the textures to line up and be seamless throughout the object. When dealing with objects such as this we can use a feature called the unwrap texture where we can unwrap the textures that are kind of aligned to the faces of these objects and then kind of reposition them individually to allow them to better line up with the faces that we want. To do this, we need to select the object and click on the unwrap option in the texture mapping panel here. Once we've done that, we need to select all of the seams of the objects we want to unwrap just by selecting all of the seams on the objects like so, and then hit enter on your keypad. Once you can do that, you can see up in the um, command line up here, it asks to use the UV editor to make these changes to the map. The UV editor is found down here in the kind of bottom panel on your texture mapping panel. If you select the UV editor, we can draw it out as a rectangle box, and it doesn't matter how big or how small this is here. What it will do is it will draw out all of those faces from the object onto this panel here. And you'll see that each one of these faces represents a face on the model. Now we have that, we can actually realign or reorientate each of these faces individually. So I could take this face, I can spin it around, and it will realign that texture in a different rotation. We can move it up and down to sort of properly align with the texture here if we want to align that in a certain way. You can also type in a position in the X, Y, Z positioning there as well if you want to be more precise about the exact positioning of the object and the texturing. So we can do that to be much more exact about each of these textures and how they line with, up with one another on this particular object. You'll find that you can take these textures off the actual map piece as well if you want to, if you need more space, and it will still work in the same way so we can still align the texture even though it's not sat on this sort of square map that's found here.
Once you're happy with that, we can just hit apply and that will just apply those textures back on the surface of the object. So you'll find that the UV editor is quite powerful in allowing us to make these kind of changes to any pieces of geometry and to apply different textures to them. You can also scale them up and down as well on the texture to make the texture bigger or smaller. So if we select all the faces, use the scale tool and scale them up, this will make the texture smaller on the surface of the object as well. And the same with decreasing the scale. So this is how we'd go about texture mapping more unique objects such as this that don't seem to follow a standard mapping. So that was just a quick tutorial on how to texture map different objects in Rhino 7. For any other video tutorials on texturing and rendering in V-Ray or Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.